what I will do is um, try to um, speed through as quickly as possible. And what I've got um, is, I hope it's okay, and do reprimand me afterwards, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to go a little bit beyond um, the brief um, and talk um, about producing uh, a patient accessible report uh, for stroke. But because I think many of you may have seen information about that already, um, and there's, um, that's been quite a focus of today as well, I wanted to cover a few extra elements that were broader around the topic of today. So um, uh, producing um, information with uh, clarity and impact and to show how we've been doing that as a stroke program. So I'll start with the um, producing uh, patient accessible uh, reports for stroke survivors. Um, oops. Okay, so just a bit of background. Um, the stroke programme um, at the RCP um, has, has been collecting data since 1998 um, and we first started reporting in the public domain back in 2004 um, and the report that was produced was um, very um, very long, very wordy um, and it had a lot of useful information but from a patient perspective, um, patients, carers, stroke survivors, it wasn't um, particularly accessible at all um, and Thinking back to what Rob was saying um, in, during his uh, during his talk, is it it really was a case of there being a lot of words, and particularly for um, stroke survivors, many of whom um, have aphasia, which is communication difficulties caused by the stroke. Um, it was really uh, inaccessible. So um, a decision was made um, after the um, production of um, the 2008 public report that we really needed to find a way to make sure that this was accessible to um, patients and to their carers. So we decided to um, embark upon a project um, working with um, a group up in the University of Manchester um, and this was a, a group that brought together um, stroke survivors with some um, academics and some clinicians um, but primarily the group was um, focused around stroke survivors and carers um, and what we did is we took um, the, the lengthy report to this group and said we need your help um, please help us to make it um, easier to understand. We think there's a lot of important and useful information here, but we need to um, make it much easier for you to understand. And it really required quite a long time to break the report down and to, um, and to say, OK, well, there's potentially too much information that we can cover in something that is going to be truly uh, accessible to, to patients, um, and particularly if our focus was going to be to make it accessible to um, patients with aphasia as well. So the first step um, for, for us was to decide we can't include absolutely everything. Um, and that was, uh, that was a challenge for us because we, we wanted to include all of the information, but we just had to decide we need to, we need to focus down and um, report on what um, is most important uh, to the patients. So um, we started the um, patient involvement um, use, using this group. Um, we did have patient reps on the um, Intercollegiate Stroke Working Party, which is the steering group um, for, for the stroke audits. Um, but we wanted to very much focus in and have um, a, a focused uh, user group who, who were look, looking just at um, this new Easy Access version report. So I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see at the back what's, what's at the bottom here. Um, but essentially it's some, some different examples of, of ways in which we uh, decided to um, report on, on different results. So we have, for instance, comparisons between England, Northern Ireland and Wales um, who were taking part in the stroke audit. We also have comparisons over time. So we, we used bar charts here, and at the start of the reports, we had a how to read this report section, which had 
uh, little boxes of information. So it, I was thinking as Rob was speaking that we, we'd gone some way to doing what he really liked about the New York Times graph in, in demonstrating to the users at the start, this is how you should be reading um, these graphs. And um, in future, I think we'd be looking to use um, online capability to make that even more of a step-by-step -step approach. Um, we also used maps, and the example here isn't actually a great one. We've actually moved on at, since, since these maps, but um, this is something that patients really did like. Um, and again, just reflecting on what you said, Rob, with, with the maps, is I think we found that, um, particularly with the groups that we've discussed, geographical location is almost the number one thing. What is it like near me? And it's almost a case that, you know, elsewhere in the country, and even and even half an hour to an hour down the road, not that interested. I, I want to know what's happening in my local area, very, very local. And um, so one thing that I would um, encourage everyone to really think about is things like, what do you call your your trusts, your sites, your hospitals, your teams. Um, there are lots of different definitions that we use in National Clinical Audit. And our patients um, knew their hospital as, you know, the name of town hospital, even though it was called the Queen Elizabeth II hospital, as are about 10 others. So it's potentially a case of having one naming convention for your um, for your participants and maybe having, having another naming convention um, for patient groups. Um, so, again, I'm <laughs> showing the deadly um, pie charts here. Um, but what we, what we have found is that the patient groups do tend to like the pie charts um, and that they, they find them to be quite a useful demonstration but I think the key for us here and why we we didn't um, uh, we didn't shy away from using them is because we were just using um, positive and negative so there were just two elements and you can really see okay it's much much more on the tick side than the cross side or vice versa or if they're fairly even then that's that's okay we did also include the percentage um, on the pie chart. And the amount of discussion that we went into, um, potentially, if we look back in hindsight, it almost may seem over the top, but we produced about 50 different types of pie chart and said, right, which is better? And it was almost like a, a bit of an opticians um, test, whereas, you know, is it this eye that's better or this eye that's better? And it was, you know, do we like um, the text on top of the pie or do we like it outside of the pie? And it was really... Um, it it's interesting how how much of an opinion people can have about small things. Actually, the text on top of the pie was preferred, but only if there was enough room to fit it within the pie. Otherwise, it had to be outside of the pie. So uh, there's, there's quite a lot of detail that you can go into in, in order to really refine what you've got. Um, but what I would say, and if Liz, our data analyst, was here, um, she would be um, beating the same drum as Rob and saying I don't like pie charts and we're going to have this um, we're going to have a very heated discussion um, when it comes to whether we continue to include pie charts and we might not when we have more complex information so I do agree that actually if you're presenting a number of different things on a pie chart then potentially it's something that people are very familiar with but perhaps isn't giving them the right information that they need so I would echo what Rob says and I think we're going to have to think quite hard about if we're going to demonstrate multiple um, pieces of a pie, whether that's the right thing. So in terms of um, how we disseminated um, the results, we did that in a number of different ways. So we did put it onto um, our website so that people could download it. Um, we also took it along to national stroke conferences. We took it along to the UK Stroke Assembly, which is a big patient um, conference which is only for patients and carers we took it to the stroke club conference so there are over 800 stroke clubs around the country and it was representatives from each of them so we were giving them you know goodie bags with 
with um, the easy access versions and other information saying, take this back to your stroke clubs. And I'm sure there would be the equivalent in terms of local um, support groups for um, that, that would be relevant to all of the different national clinical audits. So I'd really encourage um, dissemination via key local groups um, who you you can get one one person there but they can then disseminate the information to many many people and I think it's the hard to reach people um, that often really need to see these reports because we find that um, the patients who are potentially um, on the steering groups are uh, already very knowledgeable and they really appreciate having extra information but they want to give it to the patients in their local area who really you know they don't think they got that bad uh, um, a deal and maybe they had quite awful care and and seeing and seeing this says wow you know 50 percent of patients are meant to have a scan within one hour I didn't have mine for two days and it and it and it's it, it can be an eye-opener there so um, I'm very happy to um, take questions and to go into more specific detail about any of this but I if I've got a a few more minutes and just cut me off when I've gone too far. Um, I would like to see if this link will work um, and show you some of the other ways that we are presenting data with impact and clarity. So this is an example of a map that we've produced on the latest SNAP data um, that, is on our, that is on our publicly um, available website. And um, what it does is presents the information in a way which makes it quite, quite interactive. So you can look in various different ways. So you can say, I want to look at um, this hospital here, um, and I want to compare it with the, you know, the next nearest hospital. Um, and, and then you've got, you've got the results there that you can... Um, have a look at. I'm not the best person for demonstrating this. Um, if if I had others in the team here, they would do a much better job of this than me. But I think um, hopefully what it shows is that there are um, there are various different ways of um, of using this information, um, and it does include um, does include pie charts. And you can see, for instance, um, it's not all fitting onto onto the page at the moment, but you could click onto the section of the pie chart and it then highlights all of the hospitals that have um, that level. So we have levels in SNAP from A to E, um, and we can see, right, these are all the hospitals who are a level D. Um, then you can do things like click on particular um, domains of care. Um, so we have a scanning domain, so we can click on that and we can see, OK, let's hover over the A and I can see highlighted all of the teams that are um, an A for scanning. So these teams are doing uh, are doing the best and they come up, they come up here um, and you can um, you can look you can look at um, various other other measures all on one map. So it's really a chance for people to um, go into the mapping and, and really decide what is it that I want to see. There are various other things that you can do with this. So this is just a, a taster, if you like, to say, um, go and have a look at our maps and um, see whether you think it's the sort of thing um, that would um, make the results um, particularly, particularly interactive. Um, I, I won't... Um, spend longer on that because I would like to and Yvonne cut me off when I'm too long um, I'd like you to show I'd like to show you um, an example of um, what we give to individual teams so this is in terms of producing um, data with clarity and impact for um, individual teams so we give each individual team a slideshow um, and it starts off and it shows the breakdown and the spread across all of the teams um, in terms of what SNAP level they've achieved for each of the domains. So you can see that in certain ones, um, it's a little bit better scanning, there's a bit more green. Um, speech and language, there's a lot more red, so we get a, a sense of the national picture. And then for the individual team, you say this is how you've done in each of the domains and it's quite an, a nice quick overview of, of how their stroke performance is. 
Um, you'll notice we've got um, case ascertainment and audit compliance. So one thing that we think is really important is to contextualise the results and not just say, OK, the, the uh, team is A for scanning. <coughs> if they are A for scanning but they've only entered 60% of their patients, it may be that the 40% they didn't enter had rubbish results. So we're saying, OK, on the information we've got, they're an A, but let's contextualise it. Good, they were 90% plus for their case ascertainment, so we can rely on these results as being representative of the vast majority of their patients. Um, we also have an audit compliance. Now, this helps us to essentially bully teams into answering um, in the way we want them to. So we do have some not known options. Occasionally, it will be really hard to get the information, and we don't want that to jeopardise that patient being included in the audit. But we don't want teams to be entering not known all the time. So we give them an audit compliance score that um, is essentially saying, are they answering the audit very comprehensively? Are they doing it efficiently, um, etc.? And then... We have a series of, um, of slides, and th again, this is at individual team level, so you can see the red dotted line, which represents the individual team, and it shows where you fit. So they, this team fits into level C for audit compliance, and then you can see the spread of all of the other teams um, across. Um, we've got some, um, some line graphs um, showing your team in red with the individual percentages at each point in the month against the national average. Um, so you can see, OK, what's, what's going wrong here? We seem to be going down. Um, let's investigate this. Um, and again, we go through with each of the domains um, and show how they're doing compared to the national average and monthly trends. Um, so this is giving a huge amount of information which we really encourage the teams to use in um, MDT meetings um, and to maybe even take to the trust board and uh, pick a few examples of slides to show you know, where they've improved and made improvements as a result of taking action um, from the audit. Um, if I can show one extra thing... So this is um, our summary report, um, which gives e even more information. So it gives the, the, the different levels. And essentially what we've done is to break it down into, into the different domains so that they can see their results against the, um, the national average. Um, and you've got the various, uh, the various domains here. And... Um, the final thing that I will show you is um, the portfolio of results. Um, and what we, what we think here is that this is about um, making sure that um, all of the information that anyone could potentially want is provided, but you're, you're providing it in a format where you're expressing that it is a huge amount of information and potentially too much for most people. Most people might not want this. But in, um, in, in terms of data transparency, this is about making the data um, truly transparent. Um, I've lost my mouse. Oh, here it is. Um, so we have an introductory section, key recommendations. We then have the key indicators, information about case ascertainment and audit compliance, um, about the different cohorts, um, we also have a transfer tree so we can see exactly the, where the patient flow is going. So hopefully you're get, getting the impression. But essentially what I would come back to, um, back to as, a, as a conclusion, if you like, is the, um, the easy access version report is almost the final piece of the development and when you've really got your um, what you want in terms of your key messages you have to have that very um, very set out and know exactly what you want as your key messages and in order to get there I think you do need lots of open information lots and lots of detail and then find different ways of summarizing it and putting it into graphs for the teams and then ultimately into an easy access version that is very simple um, condensed and concise so thank you sorry for thank you very over. much James